Okay, so let's get started. Uh, what we're going to discuss today is uh, uh, database security made easy. Database security as easy as one, two, three. Um, I'm going to uh, talk to you about uh, what are the uh, current uh, database security challenges, uh, how complex they are, um, how complex uh, existing solutions for database security are, and uh, why uh, the world doesn't have to be that way, and how you can easily uh, provide a simple database security solution to complex uh, security issues uh, that exist today in database systems. So uh, if we take a look at uh, just uh, um, the marquee events that happened uh, last year in 2012, uh, there were hundreds of breaches, most of them stemmed from uh, uh, databases. Uh, and if we just uh, touch a few of them, uh, the major ones, uh, uh, in June 2012, Amazon's Zappos.com had a massive data breach that exposed the personal information of 24 million customers. Uh, in February last year, the University of North Carolina had uh, 350,000 records uh, with exposed social security numbers and financial online information. In March of last year, um, the major credit card companies, MasterCard and Visa, alerted major banks across the USA about a major breach at uh, one of their vendors, Global Payment Systems, that included 7 million customer records and about 1.5 million credit card numbers that were exposed. This was a huge breach uh, back in March last year. Um, a few of the uh, known internet companies, such as LinkedIn, had also uh, breaches. Uh, there was a major breach reported in June 2012 of at least 6.5 million passwords that were exposed of LinkedIn users. These users were instructed on how to uh, uh, re-log into their profiles and change their password accordingly. The data was uh, stolen from LinkedIn database. And uh, uh, most recently, in November of last year, Adobe had uh, 150,000 user accounts exposed. Uh, the passwords were uh, hashed, but uh, hackers could easily track the password back to the original format. According to the FBI, organized data theft today is even bigger than the criminal industry uh, and the drugs industry. This is, uh, this, as, as it may sound uh, surprising, uh, the value of data residing in databases today is so huge that this has become the major target recently by uh, hackers. Um, attacks are becoming more and more sophisticated. Uh, they are executed mostly by financially motivated cyber criminals. Uh, state-sponsored espionage groups, hacktivists, and uh, that may be surprising as well, but by insider or privileged users that want to take advantage of information belonging to the organizations that they work for, uh, to take that information with them and sell them to uh, third parties to uh, generate financial gains. The overall information theft in 2011 uh, reached about 174 million records that were exposed just in the USA. Uh, and the average cost of a data breach was about 214 US dollars per record. This uh, comes from many, many sources and analysts. These numbers are, are uh, well known in the industry. There's even a market for stolen records. Uh, there's a price tag for every type of record, whether that's a social security number, a credit card number, an identity number, telephone, email, etc. There's a price tag to each of these uh, personally identifiable information uh, items that attach to every record stolen. And in terms of compliance, 96 of uh, victims are subject to PCI DSS. Um, um, I've not uh, actually achieved any compliance, meaning that uh, many of the companies that hold 
uh, this uh, very sensitive information did not uh, implement any uh, computerized measure to protect this data. So uh, what, we, what we're seeing today is that uh, a few years ago, people were looking to hack into personal computers, looking to hack into uh, application servers to steal passwords. But the reality today is that the uh, databases hold the most important assets of an organization, whether it's financial data, HR, or personal data, private data, uh, consu uh, consumer data, sales, uh, and pretty much any important record today is stolen in databases because this is the standard format which can uh, be later used for data retrieval, backups, etc. cetera. Um, and many of, uh, of uh, modern applications use uh, modern database systems as the uh, storage engine for these records. Databases allow uh, automated connections such as uh, uh, application integration, data load or unload, ETL utilities, testing, backup and restore, uh, replication, reporting services, analytics, uh, data integration, and more. So they, be, they are becoming the hub of the modern information. Uh, they also use uh, or allow ad hoc user connections for administrators, high privilege users, developers, testers, application users, and casual users. According to uh, Verizon uh, two, uh, 2012 uh, data breach investigation report, database servers are accounted for 96% uh, of all records breached. So this is a huge number uh, and the pain point in terms of security is clearly becoming databases. If we talk about uh, uh, what are the common ways of uh, uh, data theft, what are the technologies that uh, hackers use to uh, steal data or uh, hack into uh, databases, one of the major uh, common uh, mean today is SQL injection. SQL injection attacks actually go directly after your most valuable asset, the database. Uh, they use the same connectivity as legitimate uh, uh, web or other application usage, and they actually piggyback on these applications uh, to masquerade the attack and uh, to uh, hide the fact that uh, they take data that the application wouldn't have taken uh, normally. Network and operating system security, such as firewalls or uh, permission-based or uh, or uh, users and roles in the in the operating system will not really help because once they gain access to the database using the application, they can uh, walk through the schema of the application and uh, systematically steal the data from the app. Many systems are also uh, um, uh, have uh, vulnerabilities, uh, including uh, um, some uh, packaged applications or platforms. Most recently, last week, there was a huge uh, um, breach found in Ruby on Rails in certain versions. Uh, Ruby released, uh, immediately released a patch to uh, close these uh, holes, but it takes time to pro for production applications to update uh, technology stacks, and those who haven't done that are still vulnerable to uh, this SQL injection attempt. So definitely uh, having uh, security measures only on the application side or the operating system or the network side is not enough. SQL injections are also discovered in closed source applications uh, and you have really nothing to do with them because you cannot rewrite the code. Uh, you're just a subject uh, to uh, the, these application vendors uh, releasing new patches to uh, address these SQL injection issues. Some penetration tests uh, at the wild show that uh, over 65% of the clients are turned out to be vulnerable to some sort of SQL injection. The most common sorts of SQL injection, this is a topic for a, a full webinar of itself. Uh, we actually done one uh, 
last month, and you are more than welcome to uh, search for uh, the Green SQL SQL injection webinar that uh, we delivered in December 2012. But the major um, SQL injection uh, types are uh, redirect or reshaping of a query, error message based, which means that uh, hackers are trying to uh, send erroneous input to the application and by that understand what type of error is returned from the database. They know the operating system, they know the database type and version, they sometimes may even know table names or column names because the error message may indicate that and then they have enough weapons to uh, continue and uh, uh, look uh, forward and uh, hack more in a more focused manner uh, uh, for the sensitive data. And there's a blind SQL injection that tries different uh, means of, uh, of injections and uh, narrowing down until, uh, until it succeeds uh, uh, injecting uh, malicious uh, SQL code to the database. While SQL injection is uh, the most common way to uh, um, attack databases and uh, still uh, um, valuable data from databases, there's uh, many other attack vectors. Um, some of them are uh, brought in this slide, um, just uh, trying to uh, log into databases using weak passwords, brute force. Uh, many of the databases have well-known ports. Some of them are open to the internet, so you just uh, try and uh, log in to the uh, database's default port using uh, well-known users and uh, simple passwords. Um, there's uh, many, many uh, researchers uh, finding out that the users use uh, very, very simple passwords even for uh, highly, um, uh, for high permission accounts such as uh, uh, system administrators and da database administrators. Uh, people try also to tamper with uh, data and auditing logs. Uh, and there's many, many other ways uh, trying to uh, hack into databases and steal data. What we also see uh, recently is, uh, is that uh, insider threats become a, th a concern that is even larger than, uh, than external threats. Uh, people understand that uh, they work for organizations that hold sensitive data. This sensitive data has a financial value uh, and they may walk out of an organization with this sensitive data um, Utilizing, uh, utilizing this data or, or selling this data to third parties. Um, and uh, many of the breaches that, uh, that I demonstrated on the first slide uh, are due to uh, people from the inside, whether it's uh, employees, consultants, or uh, outsource employees that uh, breached into the systems and stole data. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, database security solutions out there. So uh, while we uh, demonstrated the uh, database security concerns and uh, we acknowledge that uh, databases needs to be defended from SQL injection and from other attack vectors and uh, they hold the most valuable data, uh, most of the uh, database uh, security solutions out there are uh, first very, very expensive and second very, very complex to install and maintain. And that, uh, that is due to several reasons. Um, many of these solutions require on-site personnel. Uh, most usually they uh, may require dedicated hardware or servers pre-installed for, uh, for the installation of the database security product. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And uh, the licenses are, uh, are costly because of this uh, required hardware, required uh, proof of concept on site, sometimes professional services installing the software and configuring it, and uh, uh, as I said, the dedicated hardware required. They may also require you to uh, install a dedicated uh, database to keep the uh, security log records. It may be an Oracle or a SQL server, um, and usually it will require the uh, most expensive license of these databases, including partitioning option and others, 
which uh, make the solution even uh, even more expensive. So uh, the average cost of an existing database security tool is over fifty thousand U.S. dollars. For implementations that uh, include multiple instances, it could be up in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And uh, for uh, large enterprises, we're talking about millions of dollars. So uh, it's definitely not cheap to defend your databases. As I said, existing solutions are also very complex. Uh, what you see here is a Mazda RX-8 rotary engine that uh, uh, Mazda spent many, many years developing and testing. It was a great engine, but it was too complex to maintain and too expensive for mass production. So you don't see Mazda RX-8 all over the streets. There's very, very few cars of this type, and uh, the reasons are uh, definitely understood. Um, as I said, uh, the complexity uh, boils down to uh, several um, main uh, issues. First, uh, um, as I said, most of these solutions are based on uh, dedicated hardware. Some of them require special network equipment like uh, uh, tap ports or spe uh, span ports or tap devices uh, and changes to the network configuration of the organization. Uh, most of these solutions require an on-site POC, meaning that uh, the uh, database security vendor needs uh, to send a dedicated uh, person to be on-site for a few days, if not weeks, to install, configure, and maintain the product uh, and complete uh, the proof of concept. There's a long setup time. These systems need to uh, learn, need to set baselines, need to uh, learn the applications, users, databases in the organization, and uh, most of this configuration is manual. Uh, and as I said, uh, it also requires dedicated uh, servers and dedicated databases to be installed together with the installation, which makes the uh, proof of concept and uh, implementation even longer. The, soft, uh, the, the uh, hardware-based uh, solutions are, of course, uh, need to be brought in on site, but even the ones that provide virtual machines, these machines are usually not downloaded off the web and require somebody to bring it with them and to uh, uh, make sure that they are playable on the uh, existing uh, uh, hypervisors in your organizations. And the installation of these solutions require uh, several stakeholders. Uh, usually you need to bring in uh, a group of people, uh, the network, the system, uh, the security, and the database administrator, because you need to uh, make network changes, you need the DBA password, you need to open network uh, ports in the firewall, you need to have uh, a root uh, privilege to install or an administrator privilege in the, uh, in the Windows domain, and uh, that makes the, uh, the installation and uh, configuration complex. And uh, as I said, usually um, after the product is, uh, is acquired, uh, it requires a few uh, professional services, uh, people on site to configure the product to, to the customer satisfaction. So uh, once you, uh, even if you brought this, this uh, uh, complex product, it still requires a costly, um, Maintenance, it, it requires at least one dedicated person that understands how to maintain and how to use the product because it's uh, not an easy to use product. So uh, to sum up uh, what we discussed uh, till now, uh, database security is a complex uh, uh, problem. It requires a complex uh, technology to solve. Uh, and the, most of the solutions uh, out there today are uh, costly and uh, complex to install and implement. But that doesn't have to be uh, the reality. Uh, what we're going to cover today is uh, how you can do that, how you can secure your databases within a couple of minutes, uh, with a few, within a few clicks, uh, with software that you can download off the web, uh, that you can easily understand by just uh, uh, opening a web user interface uh, and a simple configuration and get protected in minutes. 
GreenSQL is a software-based uh, downloadable uh, software. Um, it's, it has a free version that allows you to uh, protect your databases from SQL injection and uh, allow you to uh, enforce separation of duties between different stakeholders, between DBAs and developers, between outsource employees and uh, um, application developers, between operations and, uh, and QA, between uh, different branches in the organization. As I said, all for free uh, forever. GreenSQL also offers a few paid packages that allow you to perform more database security activities and we'll cover that uh, um, uh, soon uh, in one of the next uh, slides and in, in during the live demo. GreenSQL requires no special network equipment. It's uh, software based. You can install it on any commodity server. It could be any Linux or Windows server. Um, and it could be installed on the application server itself or on the database server itself or on a dedicated server, no matter if this server is a, a virtual server or a physical server. We, uh, GreenSQL also offers a downloadable um, virtual appliance, so you can just uh, download it and play it on your favorite hypervisor. Uh, it has a, a five-step uh, installation asking you very, very simple questions and uh, start, you, you are protected within these five clicks as well. Uh, there's the, the, the proof of concept is uh, pretty much instant. Uh, I would say that the majority of GreenSQL customers are doing the proof of concepts by themselves. The product is self-explanatory. Uh, some of them uh, contact us and uh, we provide remote assistance from the GreenSQL uh, trained support team and usually within a session or two, or two the system is up and running uh, and the customer is uh, protected and uh, well understands the system. As I said, setup time is within minutes. Uh, you can see the value within less than an hour. I'll, I'll show you that uh, in, in a few minutes. Installations uh, can be done by a single person. Uh, usually that would be the DBA, but that could be pretty much anybody in the, in the organizations that uh, understands uh, where the database is. It could be the app developer or even the system administrator. Uh, definitely for small medium businesses, uh, there's uh, less stakeholders involved and uh, uh, the person who's in charge of the application can uh, download and install and use Green SQL. Uh, doesn't need any special training to do that. Configuration and maintenance is straightforward with a simple web-based UI uh, and email alerts. Uh, uh, GreenSQL is uh, automatically discovering the environment. It can, uh, within minutes, tell you which databases, users, applications, and IP addresses access the databases. Uh, and GreenSQL comes uh, shipped with predefined security rules that protect you from the start. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute. This is kind of uh, a quote from one of our uh, happy customers uh, from ISACA. Uh, and uh, we asked the customer, uh, why did you choose GreenSQL? Uh, and we have tons of uh, features. Uh, we have uh, our regulator, regular, uh, regulatory compliance features that allows you uh, to audit any access to uh, sensitive data, any, any administrative uh, command running against the database. We have dynamic data masking. Uh, we have a full suite of a database uh, firewall, but uh, that customer just said it in, uh, in three words, because it's easy. And ISACA is, is an organization that actually provides guidance in terms of security to um, more than 100,000 organizations worldwide. So uh, this kind of boils down to uh, the fact that you don't have to be an expert and you don't need to pay a lot of money and go through complex uh, uh, processes if you want to get your databases protected. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's go to uh, the live demo of GreenSQL. 
as I said before I begin the live demo, um, you can uh, ask uh, questions via GoToMeeting and uh, I'll uh, dedicate enough time during the end of the webinar to answer these questions. Uh, by the way, this webinar is recorded and will be available uh, to dow for download in, in our YouTube channel uh, within uh, a couple of days. And uh, the presentation, the slide deck, will also be available online within a couple of days as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm just going to install GreenSQL on my Windows uh, machine. Uh, what I what, what you see what, what you can see here is the uh, GreenSQL uh, distribution for Windows. It's a simple executable file that uh, you can download off our website free. Um, you just need to uh, fill in your uh, email, and uh, you will automatically get the uh, uh, software distribution. You will also get a key, a uh, license key by email, which you uh, activate the product with. I'll just show you how simple it is to install and run the product. Okay, it's a simple um, three-click installation. Um, I would say that less, less than 30 seconds are required to install the product. And we are done. When I click on close, the software is installed, all the services are running, and um, I'm getting uh, a browser window that tells me that uh, GreenSQL requires a, an SSL certificate. The product uh, is using uh, HTTPS uh, to access the uh, management uh, um, UI securely, so nobody can, uh, can understand what's going on between the uh, Green SQL Administrator and the Management Interface. I, I'm clicking on Proceed Anyway. I'm required to uh, enter my license key, which, uh, as I told you, um, is, uh, is uh, something that you get uh, via email when you download the software off our website. Um, I have uh, one of the keys uh, handy for the demonstration, so I'll just uh, paste it in the uh, license field. Clicking on continue, uh, the product is activated. I need to set up an, an initial password. The password uh, must comply with the PCI regulations, as you can see. So I'll choose a, a strong password. GreenSQL will validate that the password is strong. It, uh, it has a combination of letters, numbers, uh, special characters, uh, is uh, eight characters or more and I've actually set up the initial password and uh, the product uh, uh, is configured and installed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to connect to, uh, to my database to get, start, uh, get started with the product and uh, get the database protected. I have a SQL Server installed uh, on this machine for the demo, but it could be a remote database um, it could be a uh, MySQL database, a MariaDB database, a uh, Microsoft SQL Server database uh, from uh, SQL Server 2000 to 2012, including Windows Azure SQL database. We have customers using uh, uh, SQL Server in, uh, in the Windows Azure cloud. It could be po uh, PostgreSQL. I'm choosing SQL Server because this is what I have here. The database is located on my local host, uh, on the default port. I'm uh, putting, typing in the credentials to access the database. What you see on the right hand of this uh, wizard is that GreenSQL creates a GreenSQL proxy for me. This is the uh, transparent proxy that GreenSQL uses uh, to relay the database connections to the databases. Applications from now on will connect to the database using the green SQL proxy. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, do a check connection to make sure that uh, the database is there, the credentials are correct, and uh, the connection has succeeded. I'm clicking on continue. And basically, um, the database is now defined. Um, green SQL suggests 
uh, how to uh, connect to the database securely from this point on. What you need to do is uh, just change the connection string from this point on. GreenSQL will examine each and every connection uh, against uh, uh, SQL injection uh, detection rules, against uh, separation of duties. It will perform dynamic data masking and uh, database activity monitoring using this connection string. I'm clicking on Finish, and I'm logged into the, uh, to the system. Uh, nothing has happened yet. I can see that uh, um, I'm logged into Green SQL. And uh, what I can do now is I can start using applications uh, the way I used them a minute before, before I had Green SQL installed to access uh, the database in a secure manner. What you can see here in the database security um, um, pane is that I already have three predefined rules. Um, the topmost is a rule that uh, um, allows me to whitelist a group of SQL statements, meaning that every SQL statement of a certain pattern will be whitelisted and will be allowed to run against the database. If it's a, it's, it's, if it's a pattern that is not one of the whitelist patterns, which uh, in this case there's no whitelist patterns yet because I haven't defined any, um, I'm, uh, I, I'm, uh, I have defined a SQL injection detection rule, so the system is automatically starting to monitor for a SQL injection attempt. Uh, I can also use uh, an active protection, meaning that any attempt will be immediately blocked, but the system comes uh, shipped with a monitoring um, predefined, so you can uh, test the system, see that uh, the system uh, uh, is operating correctly, um, look at the list of uh, valid statements versus the ones that are identified as uh, SQL injection patterns and uh, classify them, and then after a few hours or days, just um, change the rule to be in an active protection uh, manner. And then I have the third rules, that means that any query that doesn't match any of these two queries will be automatically allowed to run against the database. So these rules are, are uh, the default rules when you install Green SQL. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to launch um, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio as a simple application for a very quick demo. I'm going to use uh, um, the SA user with its password. Uh, if you can see here that I'm using port 1434, which is the port that Green SQL relays the traffic from to the uh, database. I'm just clicking on, sorry, switch the user. I'm just clicking on connect. And then I'm, now I'm connected to the database uh, via Green SQL. I can uh, um, go and see the list of databases, list of tables in each database, as if I was uh, connected uh, regularly to, uh, to the database. And what happened right now is that I opened the first session through Green SQL, and Green SQL started uh, defining the baseline and started discovering the environment. So uh, if I go to the management console right now, I'm going to database security, looking at objects, I can I can already see that uh, there was an access to the database from the IP address 127.0.0.1. I can see the two users try to access the database, QA and SA. I can see that uh, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio uh, started at, at accessing the database. Uh, let me try to run a simple query using the, uh, let's uh, just uh, run a simple query using Green SQL. Now I can see the two additional applications uh, were added because the Management Studio is using a subset of applications to access the database. I can also, um, for the sake of demo, run a second application, which is uh, SQL CMD. Let me log in with the password. I'll do use adventure 
works, go, and then just do select star from sales credit card limit 10 and go. Sorry. Okay, just doing a select star from sales credit card. Uh, the query is running through Grand SQL. And if I go now to see the uh, list of uh, databases in the databases pane, I can see that Green SQL detected these following databases on the uh, SQL Server instance that I uh, just uh, ran the query against. So Green SQL now is, uh, has set the baselines. It understands the databases, users, IP addresses. If it was a multi-user app, you would see all the IP addresses, uh, all the uh, different types of applications, users, and databases. And uh, this is the normal behavior of the app. It is very easy in a matter of minutes to set this baseline and uh, start um, defining exceptions to the baseline and getting an alerts based on these exceptions. So uh, you are up and running in, in, in a really, really short time. Let me now demonstrate uh, what happens if I'm trying to uh, run something that may be perceived as a SQL injection. This is kind of an artificial uh, SQL injection that I um, prepared a SQL statement that mimics a SQL injection attempt. Um, uh, and it's not done through the uh, um, kind of a web app or a front-end app, but I'm just running the SQL from Management Studio against the database. So I'm just copying the text. Copying it here. Well, I'm, I'm taking uh, um, just a normal select uh, um, and putting uh, uh, something that is always true here uh, with a union, trying to uh, get more data, and on the end, get the server name for uh, hijacking reasons. So this, is, this would be normally considered as a SQL injection attempt. But as I said, uh, there's a, um, a comprehensive SQL injection detection engine embedded with Green SQL that uh, um, um, basically understands which of the statements is, uh, is a SQL injection attempt and which statement is not. And uh, Green SQL allows you to uh, run in a learning mode, meaning that some of the application normal commands may be intercepted as a SQL injection attempt, and you are able to put them in a whitelist. So let me run this query. What you can see is that results are being returned in a normal fashion. But what happened in Green SQL, if I go to the dashboard, I can see that there was an intrusion attempt. Uh, let me go to database security, query groups, injection patterns. Let me do a quick setting. Okay, now I see that uh, this pattern ran against the database. It was executed one time. I can see the database, database type, and the Green SQL proxy. <coughs> I can leave it as is because I don't know this statement. I, I believe this is a SQL injection attempt. Or what I can do is I can um, attach it to the whitelist, to the, the list of the default allowed uh, queries group, because I know that this is something that the application generated. It may look like a SQL injection attempt, but it's not. And from this point on, if I click on update, uh, the, the, the statement will al always be allowed and whitelisted. I'm not doing that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, go to the policy. And as I showed you before, I'm going to move from a monitoring uh, mode to an active mode that blocks a SQL injection uh, attempt. What I see here is that I will get an empty result set if I'm uh, 
running a SQL injection attempt. Let me do a quick update. Now I'm rerunning the statement and I'm getting an empty result set back because GreenSQL detected it as a, a SQL injection attempt. Well, let's say that uh, um, I saw that it is a SQL injection attempt and this is something that the application normally fires. As I said, I can simply go here and uh, say that this, is, uh, this statement is okay uh, and it, it's, it should belong to the whitelist group. Clicking on update, going to the group, I see that uh, this, there, uh, there's uh, one statement in the uh, whitelist uh, group for SQL Server. And from now on, this statement will be allowed if I run it. If I go back to the uh, list of uh, applications showing you the, uh, the discovery uh, um, process again, I remind you that I have the SQL CMD uh, running. Um, I see that uh, um, there's somebody else trying to access my database now from an additional IP address. I see that SQL CMD is also uh, one of the uh, um, application that was added to the list of application names. What I can do now is I can create a new rule saying that this is a database firewall rule and which I want to apply on all of my databases. Um, it's a query groups rule. Um, and um, I'm not, I don't want to allow any SQL CMD. I want to block. Return, I want to close the uh, SQL connection. For every attempt trying to access uh, my databases using SQL CMD, or I can do that for any attempt from a certain IP address, or from a certain user, uh, or for in a certain time, I do a create rule. Sorry, I'll do any query here. Now I have the list of rules in the firewall. This is the new rule that I created. I can put it as the topmost rule, and I, I put a block here. And from this point on, any new attempt to run something through SQL CMD should fail. What you see here is that my connection was closed because I defined a block here. So I'm, I'm doing a separation of duties. I'm allowing only a certain app to access my database. I'm not allowing um, the other applications to uh, access my database. As I said, you can apply it on uh, users, on specific databases, on specific queries, and on specific um, um, schedules, and specific uh, uh, databases. I also demonstrated how you can be protected from SQL injection attempt. Let me uh, um, put the system back to its original format, remove this rule, and uh, demonstrate the uh, dynamic data masking. I'm putting the uh, SQL injection uh, um, rule to be in monitoring mode just to learn and not to block SQL injection attempt. I'm going to data masking. Dynamic data masking is something unique to GreenSQL. It allows you to mask sensitive data based on a certain app, certain user, a certain database in a certain schedule without changing anything in your app or in your database. Everything is done in the wire in between the app and the database. Uh, and what I'm going to show you now is, uh, um, let me put in a clear uh, SQL statement here that um, basically selects um, the credit card numbers from a credit card uh, table. Let me run it. Just to, uh, select top 1000 from a simple table. What you can see here is that uh, application behaves normally and uh, um, the credit card number is uh, returned as is. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I, I 
for the sake of the demo, I decided that uh, the, cre the car card number field is sensitive field, which I, I'm not, I don't want to expose. I, wa I want the application to uh, uh, remain uh, the same. I want to re uh, keep the application's integrity, but I want the credit card number to be hidden. So I'm going to the uh, data masking, and I'm, I have a database walker here. I'm going to the sales schema, credit card table. I'm choosing the card number field, doing an update. I can, there's many, many masking functions um, based on uh, different regulations all over the world. There's email masking and numbers masking and string masking. But here the, it's a credit card, so I'll choose the credit card masking, but you can use any other algorithm. I can limit the masking only to certain IPs certain users, certain applications, and I'm going to create this rule. So I, I now decided that whoever accesses the database trying to uh, select data from the uh, card number field in the credit card table will get it masked. Let me run the query again. And what you see here is that the card number, I haven't updated the database, I haven't changed the uh, SQL statement and the card number uh, is returned masked and the application uh, keeps on getting a card number of 16 digits. Um, and uh, But if somebody tries to hijack the numbers, you will never be able to get the uh, original numbers, just the four last digits. So this was a quick demo of, of uh, GreenSQL, the product. I'll just uh, try to quickly um, explain how it works. GreenSQL is a transparent proxy between, transparent reverse proxy, sorry, between the applications and the database. It examines every session um, connecting to the database and every SQL running on that session. It enforces security uh, rules on these SQLs. It could be SQL injection prevention, it could be database activity monitoring, could be dynamic data masking, and it could be separation of duties, and the ones that are um, permitted by GreenSQL are sent to the database and results are uh, getting back to the original app. So thank you for uh, watching the, the deck and the demo, and now I'll be uh, answering questions. You are more than welcome to um, send, use the questions uh, pane in um, the uh, go to meeting uh, um, pane. Okay, now I can see these uh, couple of questions in here. So yeah, um, data masking. I believe that I did a quick demo. Uh, anybody want who wants. Uh, more focused demo on either database security or SQL injection or uh, database activity monitoring or dynamic data masking, just contact us at uh, um, through our website or at info uh, at greensql.com and we'll be happy to get back to you and provide you with a dedicated demo of the software. We also have resources on our website. Um, I see here a question, uh, does GreenSQL support inline mode, not proxy, only monitor? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we also support uh, GreenSQL in a bridge mode. Um, this is something that is coming uh, in, uh, in the end of uh, Q1 this year. Please uh, um, contact us for more uh, um, data on this. This is definitely something that uh, we're doing. Um, there's a question about port mirroring. This is not something that we're doing. As I uh, um, try to uh, explain, we don't require any, spe any specific network uh, configuration, hardware, 
port mirroring, etc. Uh, we want the solution to be as simple as possible and as easy to install as possible. There's a question about support for Oracle database. Uh, yes, it is in our roadmap. As you saw, GreenSQL supports SQL Server um, and uh, SQL Azure, so MySQL, uh, including MariaDB, and it also supports Amazon RDS for MySQL and SQL Server and PostgreSQL. Um, and um, we are having Oracle in our roadmap. So this is something that uh, you should look forward in the in the next couple of months. There's another question about is there masking on a record level? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, you can uh, you can do masking uh, on the record level. This is also something that is uh, is coming in a roadmap. But you can uh, do some of the record level masking using our existing capabilities. Uh, again, you will need to contact us for more information. This is something that we have done with a couple of our customers. Uh, yes, another question. Does GreenSQL support Microsoft SQL Server over SSL? The answer is yes. Um, moreover, um, Windows Azure SQL Database is using SSL communications and GreenSQL is working in this manner. Definitely, you can use SSL. This is a more secured fashion, and GreenSQL supports it. Uh, there's a question, can you set your own masking rule? So, as I said, there, we have uh, uh, dozens of uh, masking uh, functions, but if you want your own masking function, you can contact us and we'll add a function, and uh, we expect to have customized masking functions uh, in Q2 this year, if this is something in our roadmap, please contact us for more information. Another question is how much performance impact does it have on a database? Um, we have seen systems uh, going from uh, fractions of a percent up to uh, 1.5 or 2 percent, depending on the uh, configuration of GreenSQL installation. Um, as I said, GreenSQL is a software. You can install it either on the app server or on the database server or on the server uh, in between. Uh, if you provide GreenSQL with enough um, hardware uh, with a good network interface and uh, um, ample memory, you will have uh, a less than 1% uh, uh, performance impact. Uh, GreenSQL is, is a very, um, very conscious about uh, performance overhead and we're trying to do security without, without hurting performance. We also have um, a, a SQL caching option in GreenSQL that allows you to uh, um, do some, some uh, caching and even uh, sometimes improve performance. Uh, somebody asks here, can you demonstrate the web URL injection blocking? Uh, this is something I could have done, but I don't have enough time now. Uh, please contact us. This, we can definitely do that. We can even show you how regular web application firewalls will not block uh, this uh, uh, URL injection, while GreenSQL will detect the injection on the database level. So definitely, please do contact us, and we'll show you how it works. Uh, another question is here, I work with pharma data and NDC numbers are something I would like to mask. The answer is yes, we have uh, several masking for numbers, uh, several masking functions, uh, starting from scrambling the numbers to uh, rounding them to uh, uh, using zeros only or ones only or many different combinations. Um, and as I said, you can also provide your own masking function, so this is definitely something we support. Uh, another question is, what is the app called on our website? The application name is, uh, is uh, the same as our company name, it's GreenSQL. We have several packages, so if you go to download, you will see the different packages. We have uh, a free package, we have a database activity monitoring package, database uh, dynamic data masking package, and uh, uh, a full package that includes everything. 
Can we turn off activity monitoring silence? We are relying on another monitoring software, somebody asked, and the answer is yes. Uh, Green SQL is a modular system. Uh, you can do just database security, you can do just database, just uh, dynamic data masking, or just database activity monitoring. Uh, you can mix and match, you can do only one uh, without the others, so uh, it's a flexible system. Single installation, so no worries about that. And last question that I see is, does Green SQL support non-relational databases such as MongoDB? This is something we're looking at in a roadmap. Uh, we, have, we don't have a, a clear roadmap for no SQL databases, but this is something we're exploring and in research. I suggest that you stay tuned for uh, our notifications on our website. Uh, we are looking at MongoDB uh, specifically. So I don't see uh, any more questions coming in. I would like to thank you uh, all for uh, taking the time and participating in this webinar and live demo. As I said, uh, this, uh, uh, the whole session is recorded and we will upload it to our website and uh, Green SQL's YouTube channel. Uh, we will also update, uh, uh, upload the deck uh, in, in a matter of days. So uh, stay tuned for uh, emails uh, that will uh, um, instruct you how to uh, watch the recorded version of the, uh, the session and where to download the deck from. Again, thank you very much for participating and looking forward to have you uh, visiting uh, Green SQL website and uh, doing database security in a simple way, in a non-costly manner. Thanks.